is that such produce can have negative effects on human health since they don't contain artificial substances. The foods from ecological farming are assimilated correctly by the organisms without altering the metabolic functions. According to nutritionists, most degenerative diseases have their origin in food. Another characteristic of ecological farming is that when growing food in balanced soils by natural fertilizers, the products are more nutritious because they contain higher levels of vitamins, essential minerals, antioxidants, carbohydrates and proteins. When you're talking about industrial agriculture, we're looking at the clearing of, of large tracts of land and then also they're doing monocropping, they're using um, agrochemicals extensively. And so that kind of agriculture has negative impacts on the environment. We're not only looking at soil pollution, we're looking at water pollution, we're looking at air pollution. And that's why we came with something known as ecological ag agriculture. So we're looking at conserving the environment as well as increasing food production. If you look at statistics, there's shown that there's been an increase in the use of agrochemicals, particularly in Kenya. We've seen the Ministry of, of Agriculture giving subsidies, you know, for fertilizers, and that is not a good thing. So that's why we decided to educate farmers on a type of farm, um, farming method that doesn't in, involve the use of agrochemicals. One revelation that Claire shares is that different toxicological studies show the relationship between pesticides and certain pathologies such as cancer, allergies and asthma. One example which Claire shares which is of a serious concern especially in developing countries is the issue of poor regulation in pesticide application to the extent where farmers are not even aware that they should put on a hazmat suit when spraying their crops. What is not being done is that the farmers have not been given they're not being given the right information. You know, when a farmer comes to you and tells you, I have a problem with the four lamiwam, and you know you are an aggravate dealer, obviously you want to make profit. So you'll tell the farmer, oh, I have something that you can use to control the four lamiwam on your farm. But you're not telling this farmer, what are the impacts of this chemical on your farm? If you look at the most farmers that we have in Kenya, smallholder farmers, right? They don't even have the, you know, the hazmat suit. Because when you're spraying those chemicals, you're supposed to have a hazmat suit. Those farmers cannot afford a hazmat suit. They, they touch the chemicals with their bare hands. Some of them inhale those chemicals. And when you speak to most of them, they tell you, oh, you know, after spraying, I feel dizzy, so I take milk. Milk does not help. They are so misinformed. They have no idea. Ecological approaches call for designing the field and farm to take advantage of the inherent strengths of natural systems. Most of this is done prior to and during planting of a crop and has the goal of preventing problems from developing by contributing to one or more of the three overall strategies that include growing healthy plants with strong defense capabilities, stress pastes and enhanced beneficial organisms. One of the ways which Claire advocates for farmers to be able to achieve this is by using natural ways of clearing pesticides instead of using chemicals. We had one of the farmers that we train, we, we've been working with on ecological agriculture in Makueni. So he told us he's, he'd been using um, a certain chemical to control mango anthracnose. So there's this disease on the mangoes that sort of um, has black stuff on, on the mangoes. And he's, he'd been using that to control, to control uh, those kind of, of, of invest, infestation on, on his mangoes. So when we taught him how to use chili and garlic to control it, and he came to me and he was like, I wish I knew this. I would not have spent money buying it because you buy one, one bottle, it's not enough. You keep on spraying, um, the disease doesn't go away, the, the pests do not go away. But with this one, I can see that it's not only good for me because you know chili and garlic we eat it right so if you spread your mangoes today that means by the end of the day you can go and eat them claire ends by challenging national governments worldwide to invest more on training farmers on good agricultural practices i think the government of kenya needs to set aside policies that support smallholder farmers that are currently carrying out ecological agriculture majority of our food the food consumed in kenya today is produced by smallholder farmers and the government needs to ensure that these farmers have their own seed banks, you know, selling seeds to farmers. If the government made sure that each county or each community in, several, in the 47 counties have seed banks where they can go and get the indigenous seeds, you know, the indigenous seeds, 
you don't need to go and buy them each and every planting season. You can just reuse them. Remember how our, our great grandparents used to farm? Like they would get beans and then they keep them until the next harvesting, uh, the next planting season. They eat some, keep some like that. So they never used to waste money. Um, to go in and buy seeds. And that's the same thing with the, the fertilizers. So you've created a fertilizer subsidy program. Farmers get loans to come and buy these fertilizers and then they go and add on their soil, most of which which is not tested. They don't get the yields they expected to get. So they are unable to pay back some of this loan. They should be agriculture extension officers who are also training farmers on ecological farming. Not just telling them, oh, you need to use chemicals, you need to use chemicals to control for lamiwam, but they should also tell, him, tell them what are some of the environmentally friendly ways in which you can control for lamiwam. Apart from holding trainings, Claire also calls on national governments to ban use of harmful chemicals currently in circulation in most countries from being used by farmers. We all use tomatoes for cooking, right? So if you've consumed tomatoes, chances are you've, you've, you've eaten that harmful uh, fungicide, which is known as cabendazim. It's a fungicide. It is um, found in this product called chariot or bendazim. It's actually in, sold in the Kenyan market. If you go to the agrovet shops, you'll, you'll find it there. And cabendazim has been banned um, in various European Union countries, or rather it's not approved for sale there. And so the question is, why is it approved for sale here? We know it has various effects on the human health. It has various effects on the environment. We're talking about some of them being, um, it's mutagenic. When you look at it being mutagenic, we're looking at human health. So why then are we using a chemical that has been banned for being mutagenic or being an endocrine disruptor? Why are we still using it here? And it's just not only carbendazine. We have some of them as atrazine, which are very harmful to fish. A lot of people eat fish, especially from the Western region. People eat fish. So we have farmers also who are growing food alongside the shores of Lake Victoria, right? Probably most of them are using some of these chemicals. These chemicals, when it rains, they sort of leach into the, into the Lake Victoria. That means our fish populations in Lake Victoria, we find that most of them have this chemicals in them. Claire also ends by advising farmers to always carry out regular soil tests in order to get higher yields. When it comes to good farming practices, um, the farmers need to know that protecting your soil is the first step in getting good, good yields. So if your soil is not healthy, then chances are you will not get good yields, no matter the amount of fertilizers you keep on using. If your soil does not have enough microorganisms, if the soil pH is not appropriate, which you're talking about pH of 7, then you're not going to get good yields. So you have to take care of your soil first before you even talk of any other thing. Yeah. And that's all we had time for in today's edition. I hope you've learned a lot on ecological farming. Catch us again every Monday and Tuesday from 10 p.m. for more educative stories only on KTN Farmers TV.